By, by 1967, another dramatic change happens when a bunch of Jesus freak hippies in the beach areas of Southern California go to Calvary Chapel, which has 30 people, Chuck Smith, 30 people, before long with Lonnie Frisbee uh, leading the parade. There's a thousand kids there, and the church has to uh, has decided to absorb this and with it the culture. And for the first time, the church that I know of in history, the church lets this very defined subculture dictate what it will be. Out go the ties, out go the hymns, uh, out go all the normal and formal things, and and the the the, the hippie culture, the communal living, uh, you, know, you know, kids coming out of drugs and free sex and all of that—that that very casual thing—and that's a charismatic church. That's that's. That's a four-square church. So that's where the movement becomes what we know as Calvary Chapel. The market-driven church comes out of that charismatic world. It doesn't come out of Reformed theology. How does it come out of it? Because the first Calvary Chapel was essentially the church saying, we'll let the culture tell us what we need to be. And that set the thing in motion. So you'd think that a movie called Jesus Revolution would get everyone excited, and it's something we should embrace with open arms, right? Said no verse ever. Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me, it comes directly from God's Word. And before we get started today, I'm asking you would subscribe to our channel and give this a thumbs up. On today's episode, I'm going to share with you several reasons why the new movie, Jesus Revolution, should be marked and avoided by you. You do not need to be watching this movie, and I think you're going to be shocked to hear the reasons why. And please know up front, I'm not trying to hate on everything, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but too many people in the body of Christ, too many people in the church, they want to be entertained, and they run to anything with a Jesus sticker slapped on it but we have to test it and see if it goes along with God's word or not. So I'm gonna go over some clear reasons why this movie is deceiving many people. Are you ready? Let's go. Number one, I call it easy believism. This is a practice that we've seen at least since Billy Graham in the 1950s and more recently Rick Warren, where all you do is you pray a prayer. You repeat a prayer after a pastor or an evangelist. You just come forward and walk an aisle and bam, you're saved. You're going to heaven. Whew. Wow, that's pretty easy. Again, why it's called easy believism. And here's Greg Laurie showing you how easy it is for you to be saved. This is a multitude of people and we are so thankful that you have all made the most important decision of your entire life life. This is the night your life changes for time and eternity. As I pray this prayer, I would like you to pray it out loud after me. God, I'm sorry for my sin, but I thank you for sending Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to die on that cross for my sin. I turn from that sin. I choose to follow Jesus from this night forward as Savior and Lord as my God and my friend, thank you for hearing this prayer. Thank you for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you guys. And welcome to the family of God. Nowhere do we find this in the Bible at all. Jesus never went around going, do you want to ask me into your heart? Do you want to make me Lord and Savior? Well, just repeat this prayer after me. No. The apostles never did this. This is nothing that is scriptural. And please know that Greg Laurie was mentored by none other than Billy Graham. And Billy Graham created millions of false converts by this unbiblical practice. Also, please know that Billy Graham mentored uh, Rick Warren. And Billy Graham went on the Robert Schuller national TV program denying that Jesus was the only way to be saved. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name 
whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world, uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have, and they turn to the only light that they have, and I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven. That's a damning false teaching. See, we're not saved by repeating a prayer or walking an aisle. We're saved by God's grace. And it is received, according to Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, by faith. That is it. Jesus was clear in John 3, verses 3 through 8, that we play no role in our salvation. Just like we play no role in our physical birth, we play no role in our spiritual birth. So, Jesus' revolution is promoting a false, sugar-coated, watered-down gospel that saves no one. Point number two is promotion of false teachers. In this film, we see a promoting of false teachers, dangerous wolves in sheep's clothing, and it's normalizing them, making it look like, oh, there's nothing wrong with these guys. You should follow them. You should check them out. These are good guys. What's wrong with you people? No. We already talked about Billy Graham, but let's talk about Katherine Kuhlman. She's one of the people that is mentioned in this, uh, this movie, and she is demonic. She is evil. There's nothing she did that was godly. She led many, many people astray, including a false prophecy in the early 1970s, and she prophesied to a bunch of young people at a crusade that they would be the last youth generation before Jesus returned. What? Well, it's 2023, and Jesus still hasn't returned. That was a false prophecy, making her a false prophet. But worse, she tried to claim to heal people and received revelation from God, which was false. And she passed on her anointing, so to speak, and mentored Benny Hinn. And Benny Hinn is one of the worst heretics and false teachers of today. But I want you to see other things that she did. Watch this little clip of Katherine Kuhlman. I want everybody to know that I'm with the most wonderful people in the whole world. I know you call them the Jesus people. And you've often wondered about them. And the news media has given them great publicity. And you've turned the pages of your magazines and you've seen their pictures. And you've seen the picture of Chuck Smith and Dwayne Pedersen. And if you look very closely, you'll recognize some of the faces that you've seen. Also, you saw in that clip, and we're going to talk about him, is Chuck Smith, the founder of Calvary Chapel. Now, so many people think he's amazing and whatnot, but he really is not. Chuck predicted that the rapture would happen before 1981. What did he say? Well, again, we're here in 2023. That did not happen. That's a false prophecy. He also endorsed Catherine Kuhlman. He also endorsed Lonnie Frisbee, who's another main character in this movie. And we'll talk about him in a little bit. But he was, uh, you know, Chuck Smith was also endorsed, not a surprise, by Billy Graham as well. You're not starting to see a little bit of a pattern here, hopefully. Also, Greg Laurie, who is a false teacher, is celebrated in this. This is pretty much a lot of, a lot of this is like a picture of the story of his life. And guess what? Greg Laurie was mentored by none other than Billy Graham. And Greg Laurie, he promotes some really false stuff. People will be in heaven and in hell because of a deliberate choice, the result of a choice they make. C.S. Lewis said, quote, no one goes to heaven deservingly and no one goes to hell unwillingly, end quote. Timothy Keller made this statement about hell, quote, people only get in the afterlife what they most wanted. Well, what about that? How could a God of love send someone to hell? Well, the simple answer is God doesn't send anyone to hell. We effectively send ourselves there. And again, the easy believism, just pray a prayer and you're good. He literally, I, I don't think I've ever seen a sermon or a, uh, a thing on the radio of Greg Laurie where he doesn't end with the sinner's prayer. Just, just pray this prayer and congratulations, you're now going to heaven. That is a damning false belief. Now, not only do they affirm each other, 
but they teach things that are false, which leads to point number three. And that's what I call cheap grace. God has chosen himself some prophets. And the church for so long has been expecting a certain mold of, of what a Christian should look like or what a Christian should be or what a Christian should say. And God is blowing everybody's mind <laughs> because he's saving, he's saving the, the hippies. And nobody thought a hippie could be saved. <laughs> No change, no holiness when you come to Christ. So in essence, if you literally pray a prayer, you can go live however you want. I mean, that sounds amazing. I want to do that. Now, if you look at Lonnie Frisbee, who's the last kind of character in this movie, Lonnie claims that he came to Christ during a massive trip on LSD. And that while having this massive trip, he had visions of heaven. Also, at the same time, in the same era, he was having regular homosexual sex. I mean, uh, wait, what? Now, he supposedly came to God, you know, met up with Chuck Smith, and Chuck Smith just said, come on in. And not only that, but put him in charge eventually of a big, huge ministry at his church. Uh, it was called the House of Miracles, whatever that even means. And Lonnie got ended up getting married. So it sounded like he was really turning things around. But sadly, there was an open secret in that church that everybody knew about. And that was that Lonnie was still having regular homosexual sex on the weekends, but yet preaching still on Sunday. Well, let's just call it what it really is. That is adultery and homosexuality. And according to 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 11, he will not go to heaven. You cannot live a sinful lifestyle and be a child of God. That's also 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 through 10, and 1 Timothy 1, verses 8 through 10. Lonnie, I believe, was a false convert, and Chuck Smith clearly had little to no discernment, and I believe was not a biblical pastor. Also, let's look at the end of the story. Lonnie died in 1993 of AIDS, and Chuck Smith spoke at his funeral, and he said this, quote, Lonnie was powerfully anointed by God. What on earth? No. I mean, really? Now, again, we shouldn't be surprised because this same kind of easy believism and cheap grace is seen by Greg Laurie. Here's a screenshot where Greg has on his page where he affirms John Lennon, Bob Dylan, and Alice Cooper as being saved. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? How about new? No? You're not ashamed to say that you believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, absolutely. You know, people talk about Alice being a rebel. And there was never a rebel, more of a rebel than Jesus Christ. If you want to talk about a rebel, he was the ultimate. That's right. That's incredible. And you're, and I know you're impacting a lot of young people here and you're just doing something for your community. Well, and it's not only that, but it's all Christian. You know, we're all Christian guys and uh, Lord told us to do it. So we just obeyed. That's all. It's so wonderful that you're here continuing to make great music and, and making an impact. And you're not ashamed to say that you believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, absolutely. No, Alice Cooper, Jesus was not a rebel. He is the sinless, spotless lamb of God who took away the sins of his people. So please hear me correctly. Jesus wasn't a rebel. Jesus is God. And also you saw how Greg thinks that Alice Cooper is amazing because he claims to believe in Jesus. Ooh, goody, goody. The Bible says in James 2 verse 19 that even the demons believe. And if you see Alice Cooper on stage and even his most recent shows, they are demonic and evil. So please know that that is a, a really false portraying in this movie. And Jesus Revolution movie is promoting a false Jesus. One that is okay with your lifestyle, whatever that is. And also a false gospel that says, do whatever you want. These two things cannot save anyone. So I wanna share with you the true biblical gospel that can save. The Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth and that God is holy and just, and in him there is no sin. He is also a righteous judge who gave us his law and his standards, and who will judge each person one day, Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. 
We, on the other hand, are wretched, pitiful, rebellious sinners who constantly sin against God. We break his law. We turn our backs on him. We hate him and we constantly live for ourselves. Ephesians 2 verses 1 through 3. And because God is a righteous judge, he must punish sin. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. And because of our sin, we are under the judgment and wrath of God. And there is nothing we can do to escape that. But there is good news. And I want you to hear this. Because God also is rich in mercy. Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. And he sent the answer to our sin problem. And that was his son, Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin, who lived a sinless life that we could not live. He went to the cross to pay our debt and to die the death that we should have died. He was raised on the third day, conquering sin, death, and hell. And he proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is the only way to be saved. John 14, verse 6. And now, Jesus offers salvation to wretched, rebellious sinners like you and me who don't deserve it, who can't earn it, and who can't save themselves. He calls us to repent of our sin and to believe fully in what he did on the cross. Mark 1, verses 14 and 15. And this offer of salvation is not received because we are good people or because we've performed a set of rituals. No. It's only given by a God who is gracious and merciful. And it's only received by faith, by those who recognize that they are lost and in need of a Savior whose name is Jesus.